Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. Friday, today's guests, including Ian Bridge, standing by, are brought to you by Langley Chrysler. Don't miss the game because your car needs servicing. Langley Chrysler will pick up service and drop off your car so you don't have to miss the action. Valet service only at langleychrysler.com. Canada on the verge of qualifying for the uh, World Cup for the first time since way back in 1986. And with that, we bring in Ian Bridge. Since 1915, or 2015, you're not that old, Ian. Uh, since 2015, assistant coach of the Nebraska Huskers women's side. Uh, he works with Canada's national women's program as well. And there's a whole lot here, Ian. In 1986, we just talked about 86, he was a defender on that Canadian team that played in the World Cup in Mexico, played in the Canadian Soccer League, the North American Soccer League. Have I, have I got all this right, Ian? How are you? Uh, it's kind of ancient history, but it, it sounds sounds okay. Okay. Hey, what goes through your mind, Ian? And thanks so much for joining us. What goes through your mind when you watch what Canada is up to right now, qualifying or hopefully qualifying for the World Cup? I think pride and, and excitement uh, and and real, uh, actually being, being in, in the U.S. now, uh, it's a little bit of kind of the us against them. And it's, it's, it's funny because I work with an all Canadian staff here in Nebraska. So we, we uh, like to, to talk to the players after a big win like that, especially the, the game on the weekend where we beat the U.S., and just sort of ask, hey, you guys want to watch the game this weekend? So it, it's, uh, it's, it's fun to watch. It's an exciting team that's uh, playing fantastic uh, soccer and, and just a, a treat to watch. Your 1986 side, uh, which went to Mexico, was made up largely, including yourself, of British Columbians. Now there's more nationwide so. representation. What's changed in Canadian soccer, Ian? Uh, very much the... the player development model that's now taken taken care of by the, the pro clubs, the MLS teams. Um, that's been, I think, the, the, the biggest single thing that, that, that the players from a young age are exposed to, mm -hmm. to top coaching and, and obviously have a pathway to, to the World Cup team that is, is, is very much better structured than it was back in the day. Uh, John Herdman, uh, the coach right now of Team Canada's team, Tony Waiters back in uh, 1986. When, when you look back at 86, at Mexico, qualifying, in Mexico, all of that, what stands out, Ian? What comes to mind? Uh, I, I think that the, it, it's difficult. You, you don't really remember games mm -hmm. as much as kind of moments with the team. Uh, things like... Uh, coming to training camps as a group. T Tony was fantastic in, in uh, giving us a structure, but the, the group of guys that were together for a long time through the kind of early 80s, through the 84 Olympics, and then into that 86 World Cup uh, run uh, in qualifying, you, you just, I can remember just, just hard work, lot, lots of fun. It's certainly the, 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 the big moments are the, the win in Honduras and also the win in, in St. John's, Newfoundland. But we also went through that, that qualifying campaign unbeaten. So that, that's kind of, uh, I watch this team now, you, you see the same thing, yeah. that they got a really together group of guys that John's done a wonderful job with. And uh, I, I uh, you know, obviously they're, they're going to, I think, qualify easily, but it, they, they could go through the, the run unbeaten as well. Uh, how impressed are you, Ian, with uh, John Herdman? When he took over the team, I believe it was ranked 90th or maybe a little bit higher. But the turnaround's been huge. What kind of job has he done? Well, I, I can't. I can't say with a whole lot of certainty because I'm just. I'm a guy looking at, from the outside, but obviously you 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 read the reports and you and you, you listen to things. And, and again, I I know him from his work with the women's program and even before that with with New Zealand. And just you, anybody that talks about it just talks about an absolutely meticulous, detail-oriented um, motivator, and uh, that's very much what you need at, at the top level. Uh, certainly excellent players help out but he's he's done a, a terrific job at every stage with every team that he's worked with and it's no surprise that this team now has gone what are they 33rd in the world yeah. just uh, unbelievable 33rd. well not unbelievable but just just a real credit to 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 john his staff big staff and and, and the players 
In hockey's number one in Canada, I, I think it always will be. Will this soccer team uh, push more kids to play soccer and become the next Alfonso Davies? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you, you look at Alfonso playing at, playing at Bayern. Uh, some of the other guys, yeah. What, what's not to kind of aspire to? Younger kids, um, it becomes uh, more and more. I don't know, sellable to kids. I mean, it was the same thing back in the day with us. There was just more and more kids. But but even even now, you're looking at the the careers that these guys can have. The the uh, hopefully the kind of we've broken through with uh, this national team to, to become kind of perennial World Cup qualifiers. Who knows that that that's that can change. We thought back in the day in '86 that yeah. we'd go to the 1990 World Cup, and then the next one. I, I remember playing in the qualifying for 1990 with with some of the younger guys. I said these guys are going to be lucky; they're going to probably qualify for the next World Cup, go on to teams in Europe, and have have careers. But but that uh, that didn't happen. Shows how Ian, much I know. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I, Ian, uh, you and me both. Uh, Ian, how, how did you make? Uh, you're a Victoria kid. How did you make your way to Nebraska? And what's life like there? Uh, actually, I'm, I'm sitting in my office right now. There's John Walker from actually King, Kingston, Ontario, is the the head coach here. Mm -hmm. John's been the head coach for uh, I think 28 years. He basically started the program. Uh, so it's a long story. I was uh, this would have been in 2015. I was in Victoria, still coaching at UVic with Bruce Wilson, and uh, the the assistant coach here in Nebraska, a guy by the name of Peter Underwood, was was killed in a car accident. Really uh, devastating, sad story, but. John called me up and said, Ian, would you like to come here and be our kind of interim assistant coach? So it was just a, a, a just one of those things. I, I knew John. It was it was going to be a short term position. I said, yeah, I'll, I'll come, John, and, and, and do the work there. But within just even a couple of weeks, I, I realized this is just a, a wonderful place to work, a wonderful staff to work with. Uh, and six and a half years later, here I am still. Yeah, doesn't matter where you are. It all comes down to, to, to people. You're involved in the Canadian women's program. How would you describe the state of Canadian women's soccer right now? Uh, I think it's it maybe a little bit of a, a, a transition uh, with um, an older group, with St. Clair being, being uh, yeah. the, 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 the elder stateswoman, so to speak. Uh, what's going to happen once she steps away? Uh, there's certainly some... some major young talent coming through um but it, it kind of remains to be seen if they can kind of solidify this this uh their, their gold medal performances uh and and, and keep, keep going but but what a, what a team they've been and what a story they've been for the last few years just a joy to watch as well in uh getting back to the world cup uh, uh, for a second here uh, as uh, we uh, go with one more uh, question here Back in '86, was there? Were you in awe of the situation? Not just you, but the the team as a whole. I know you you took on Platini and, and France. There was there was a lot there, and did that hurt at all? And what advice would you give to this side as it again, hopefully, goes to Qatar? That's a multifaceted it question. It is. Yes, uh, I, I I do remember. And it's, and it's maybe the strongest moment I do have of that 86 World Cup. It was standing in the tunnel in the stadium in Lyon. It's, it's like kind of a dark tunnel, narrow, mm -hmm. but you're right beside the French players. And I remember looking across from me, and there's Platini, Batiston, Bossis, mm -hmm. all, all the guys that, that I get, I'd kind of watched on TV because I, I was playing in Switzerland at the time, and I could, I could watch you know, French TV, so I know these guys. And I'm just thinking there, okay, I know that guy's salary. He's playing for <laughs> that team, and there's, uh, play, he plays for Juventus. And, and it was that was the one moment of, of, of maybe awe. Once you got on the field, it was you know you're down to business. I remember clattering rush to with my first tackle, so that was fun. Uh, but it, I think for all of these, all of the guys, for us back then, we had the experience. Once once the game started, it was the all the kind of the surroundings going on around. And I would say that the World Cup in, in Qatar obviously will be even a much more you know, of a media circus than, yeah. than what it was for maybe the couple of reporters that were down there in, in Lyon covering us. Ian, uh, this was short notice. We just contacted you yesterday. Uh, we thank you so much for joining us. Re really appreciate it. Uh, all the best uh, with uh, Nebraska, and I know you'll be cheering on Canada from he here. Oh, London. absolutely. Thanks, guys. Thanks for reaching out. It's been fun. No, no problem. Thanks, Ian. Ian. Ian, thanks so much. Uh, Ian Bridge, big blonde defender in that 86 team, and everybody uh, who was uh, around uh, uh, back then remembers Ian uh, with the uh, white caps.
um, playing in the NASL, Canadian Soccer he played League for as the, well. It played for the Caps in 84. Yeah, yeah. Um, our, our, our thanks to him. Canada's next qualifying game, CONCACAF qualifying game, is at Costa Rica March 23rd. Again, our thanks to Ian Bridge, a break, Donnie and Dolly, the team on check. Donnie and Dolly, the team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help.